behaving right now. Uh, seems like noon is like everybody gets on at noon. I don't know. Lunchtime so evening. Turning out to be a really good time. Um, yeah. We still post, or Adriana posted our session with Musa, which was he's a 1v1 street ball champion. Um, so he showed us all these cool moves, and Adriana is still young enough to be able to figure these things out. No, whatever. <laughs> I, on the other hand, wasn't so great. Um, but there's a really great video up there with three different moves with different progressions of Musa showing these um, different uh, dribbling techniques that you can use. And we're isolating them and making them into mini videos. And he sent, sent us some supporting stuff too, where you can just go and try and learn some new moves at home. And you really need like, I don't know, like a three by three space. Like you you need nothing. You need no space. Yeah. It was super cool. I'm excited to post um, those videos that he sent me. Okay. I'm excited for today because Angela White, a three-time Olympian, is joining us today, and we're going to get fit with her. And I'm so excited about it. I'm, I'm going to go off and do it on the side, actually. <laughs> awesome. Today, I'm pretty excited, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so let's bring in Angela. Yeah. We always have a little countdown, but there we go. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. hey, everybody. How are you? I'm doing pretty good, yeah. Good. Yourselves? Good. You're hanging in there? I definitely am doing my best. Good. We are really, we feel really fortunate to manage to connect with you. Um, yeah. I don't know if everyone knows your story, knows your history, but I mean, you've been to the Olympics three times. Which three times, yeah. Pretty incredible in the 100 meter hurdles. Mm -hmm. um, grew, I went to, grew up in Edmonton, born and raised in Edmonton, went to Rochette High School. Uh, <laughs> Sweet birds, Thunderbirds. <laughs> But can you tell us a little bit about your story? Like, how did you end up getting into sprinting and hurdles and where you are today? And just tell us a little bit of your story. Yeah. So, like you said, I was born and raised in Edmonton. Um, I guess I started like probably every other athlete who's ever been to the Olympics. You just get involved in the sport. Um, my dad, uh, he would always take me and my brother out to go play whatever when we were growing up. So we would play catch. Um, I never played soccer, but I did learn how to juggle a soccer ball oh. many, many years ago. So I don't know if I can do it now. I'm not very good. But we would just be involved in whatever, uh, going to the park and jumping off things and um, foot races against your friends and riding bikes. So it wasn't anything super structured at first. It was just go out, play, have fun, test the limits, jump off things, jump onto things, throw things, run as fast as you can. Um, Actually, I do remember, I don't think they have this anymore, and I might be dating myself as far as age-wise, but there was the Canadian fitness test. Yeah. I don't know if anybody knows those. Yeah. Where you'd have to do some push-ups, you'd have to like maybe do a rope climb, we definitely had to do pull-ups, we'd have to do sprints. Yeah. And so just like a, a culmination of all these different things, and then you get graded on how many times you could do sit-ups or push-ups or yeah. whatever. Right. And then- you like the badge or the silver badge. You, or the you get the badges and so i would always be so excited because i try to get the excellence badge which was red yeah gold oh, was yeah, the red. Red. The red badge was like top tier so it started, started with kind of like being competitive that way in elementary school and then once i moved to junior high the options just opened up uh i played volleyball basketball and then uh in the spring i would just do track so kind of followed that same routine through junior high and high school and then um, it wasn't until I went away to university that I stuck specifically with track because I was able to earn a track and field scholarship to uh, school in the United States. And then from there, just kind of things just continued to, you know, I guess grow for me. I, I kept getting better. I was focusing. I was at that point, I started lifting weights, which I ended up really enjoying. Um, and then it's like you just keep taking these. And I'm sure you probably have spoken to your athletes about this, but it's just these small like incremental steps, right? Yeah. It's nothing huge. It's not like I went from nothing to the Olympics. Just like every year, I just wanted to get a little bit better, a little bit better. And then I was able to qualify for the NCAA championships. And then I was, you know, one of the top in Canada. And then next thing you know, yeah. you're, you're making teams and you just keep, keep moving your way up. Crazy. Was there a moment there? Oh, sorry. I have to first acknowledge Mike Chow. He said, don't forget about the beep test. Oh, the beep! I've never done the beep test. What? I love it. to do the beep test. I don't think I would do that well because that's endurance, and I'm a sprinter. We should Fair figure out a right home beep test. That'd be fun. I would love to do the beep test. Home it would be. Home 
it's it's so funny because um i coach a girls soccer team and i've been making them do the beat test every you know preseason, midseason, and every time i'm like i gotta do it because i haven't done it since like high school and i'm like i should do it and i always chicken out <laughs> i don't want to know but i want to know but i don't want to know you know yeah. Um, yeah sometimes you just gotta jump out of it yeah, yeah totally. i you know that's that's awesome when did you when did you realize or when did someone say to you like hey angela you're you're fast and you should keep you should channel your energy um i think i was always fast as a kid but kids are always like fast or yeah. you know there's some kids that are more than longer distance kids or so when i was a child i was fast and then i think it's just one of those things where like i never like it was like i feel like i'm fast but i always want to get better do you know what I mean? Like, so who's faster than me? Well, then let me try to be faster than them and just keep working. So yeah. as a kid, I was always quick and, and pretty fast. Um, but yeah, I guess I've never really thought of it in terms of like those kind of point, point. Yeah. Okay. And so yeah. it's a bit more, uh, what's the word? Nature over nurture, nurture over nature. Like you, your habits built you to be who you are. Oh, 100%. Um, That's awesome. I, I know back in the day, um, like when people would ask me, like, if you, if I ever, like, if being an Olympian was something that you had always decided you wanted to do as a kid, no, I'm telling the honest truth. I remember my dad watching the Olympics and being like, watch this athlete and watch her and Jackie Joyner Kirsty. And I was like, I like track because my dad likes track. He's originally from Jamaica. So that's like a huge sport in, in, in Jamaica. Yeah. But in all honesty, I keep telling people, like, I'm, I'm an Olympian that should have never been an Olympian because it wasn't like I was absolutely like mind blowingly great, but I was, I was always good. Like I would go to provincials yeah. and do really well, like win there. But when you look at, even when I was, rec when I was a coach in the NCAA, cause I coached for 10 years in the NCAA, if I look at some of the times of the kids that were recruiting, I actually, my coach, my college coach, um, and ended up being my coach after college. He looked at my marks and he didn't recruit me. Oh. Oh. So it's one of those things where I was good. Yeah. But it wasn't like I was running these phenomenal times as a as a junior uh, yeah. or as a youth. Like I and I find that there's a lot of athletes at the Olympic level who were good, but then it's like again, it's it's more the the spirit that kind of gets you there. Mm. I mean, you're gonna find your anomalies that are just like absolutely yeah. mind blowingly amazing. Yeah. But for the most part, it's just, it's that mindset of like, I want to get better. And then, and then you see where it takes you. And then you end up there and you're like, you look back and you're like, 10 years ago, I would never have thought that I'd be here, but here we are. That's cool. cool. That's cool. cool. I love that. Are you ready? Are we ready to get fit and get, yeah? Let's do it. So. Um, we're gonna, we'll flip the camera to you. So it's just you, so you can take us off with the session and then uh, we'll check back in in a few minutes, uh, maybe four or five minutes and then we'll chat a little bit more and then, yeah, get a breather, <laughs> AKA me, like get a breather. And oh, I'm not gonna be that tough. It's just a little movements here and there. It's not like this full on, like, I promise no burpees. There are no, no. burpees. Good. So we're doing we 40 yesterday. Was it 40? Yeah, we did 40 yesterday with Jason. Yeah. Okay, so we'll take a time out on burpees. Yeah. Okay, okay, awesome. Okay, we'll see you in a little bit. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay, so just uh, to let everybody know what we are doing today. So a lot of it's just going to be more footwork based. And obviously, we're going to get our heart rate up a little bit and things like that. So we'll start with the warm up. Now, depending, again, I wanted to make this where you don't need a lot of room. Um, we're doing that whole social distancing thing and social isolation. So uh just a little spot is all you need depending on what floors you have i would recommend taking your socks off which is what i'm going to do right now uh, because i don't want anybody slipping so if you feel like you might slip uh bare feet are always a good way to go because then you can get a little bit more traction so we're going to start with a warm-up so again normally we would have more space to do things but we don't right now so we'll just do everything here so we're going to start with 50, 5, 0, in place jog steps, and I'll count them out, okay? So let's get started. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 
14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 40, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 50. Okay. Hopefully everybody can hear me all right. If anybody can let me know. If not, I'm going to assume that you can hear me. Okay, so now we're going to go 15 jumping jacks. Sound is great. Perfect. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Now we're going to go back to the same 50, five, zero, in place jog steps. I'll count them out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, forty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, fifty. Whew. I think I bit off more than I could chew. That's okay. That means that we're getting warmed up. Okay. Now we're going to move to 10 body weight squats. I'll count them out. So you can either have hands on hips, hands on head, and just do the best that you can. We don't need to have perfect squats. We just want to make sure that we're getting moving, moving our joints. Okay. So here we go. So we're doing... I said 10, we're doing 10. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Whew, my heart rate's getting up there. Hopefully yours is too. Followed by another 50 step job. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, forty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, fifty. I'm hoping my counting is on point. If not, you get the gist. You get the gist of it. Okay, next, we're going to do forward lunges. So all we're going to do is step forward, and we're going to go five each leg forward lunge. One, two, three, four, five. So with these, we want to make sure that we're focused on a nice contact on the ground with our four, uh, forward foot nice and flat. What? Look at that. I see some tie-dye in the house. Nice. So now we're going to switch legs. One, two, three. Make sure we're pushing back. Four, push back. Five. Okay. Next thing. We're going to do the same thing, but reverse. We're going to do a backward lunge. So what we're going to do is we're going to step back. What we want to make sure is that when we land, we're going to land on our toe and get down low, okay? So five each leg. One, two, three, four, five. Switch legs. I'll switch directions. One, two, three, four, five. Awesome. Next, we're going to just do a three-point stretch. Work. So what we want to do is we just want to start stretching our hamstrings just a little bit. So a lot of times when I do this, I'm doing it on a track. We're going to do it in place. So what we're going to do is we're going to take three steps, bend over, touch your opposite arm to your opposite foot. And then we'll go one, two, three, bend down. Again, opposite hand. So my right hand goes to my left foot. Ready? We're going to do this five times 
each leg. So bend down, stretch. One, two, three, bend down, stretch. One, two, three, bend down, stretch. This is two. One, two, three, bend down, stretch. One, two, three. This is going to be number three. One, two, three. Down. One, two, three. This is four. One, two, three. Down. One, two, three. This is five. One, two, three. Five. Awesome. Now, next, what we're going to do is the same thing, but instead of a three point, we call it a four point. So it means that we're taking both of our hands and we're reaching down as far as we can to touch our toes. We're going to do the same thing with a three run in between. Okay, we'll do that, I guess, technically 10 times. So we even it out from the last one. So here we go. Let's go start with a three step. One, two, three. Plant your feet. Bend down, touch your toes. One, two, three. Bend down, touch your toes. One, two, three. Bend down, touch your toes. That's three. One, two, three. That's four. Five. Six. One, two, three. Seven. One, two, three. Eight. One, two, three. Nine. One, two, three. Ten. Hopefully you all are doing okay. We're almost done with our warm up. So uh, let's do a little bit of stretching. So we're gonna do knee to chest. So all we're doing is bringing our knee and pulling it to our chest. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll be here and we'll march one, two, three, pull up to the chest. One, two, three, switch legs. One, two, okay. So if everybody's good with that, we're gonna do that five times each side, so 10 total. So you can start with whatever, with whatever leg you'd like. Here we go. Knee to chest, one, two, three. Knee to chest, one, two, three. Roll it up, one, two, three. Pull it to the chest, one, two, three. This is three. One, two, three. One, two, three. This is four. One, two, three. One, two, three. This is the last set. One, two, three. There we go. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to get some, what we call hinge. So essentially, what we're going to do is called good mornings. Usually, we want to keep our hands on our head to do these good mornings. So all it is, is you want to think about pushing your bum back. So what we're going to do is here, hinge, till you feel a stretch in your hamstrings, and then back up. And when you bring yourself back up, don't think about arching your back to get you back up. You want to think about pushing your bum forward. So we shouldn't be uh, on our back. Think about we're here, push your bum forward, okay? So we're going to do this 10 times. Here we go. Back, push your bum forward. That's one. Back, hinge. Push your bum forward, back, it's three, four, four, five, six, push your bum forward, seven, eight, nine, and ten. It's a more dynamic way to kind of get a stretch in your hamstrings. Rather than just stretching like this, you're actually able to kind of get a little bit more of a, a dynamic movement on that. Uh, now, for our last bit in our warm up, we're going to just do some hip rotations. So, some of you have probably done this. So, what we're going to do is have hands on hips and we're going to go 10 one direction. So, all we're going to do is here, right? So, it looks like this. So, we're moving around the world. Think of it as like a really big hula hoop but you're using, putting your hands on your hips, okay? So we're gonna go 10, one direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Take a break. I don't know about you, but I'm getting really warmed up, so that's a good thing. I feel like, yeah, okay. 
Now let's go the other direction, 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, you know what I'm doing? Because I'm seriously, uh, I'm wearing a great t-shirt and there's probably, you can see some sweat, but that's a good thing. Uh, that means that we're getting warmed up. Now, I don't know if we should take a break now before we get into our hops or should we just continue right into the hops? Well, go right in. You got joy. Oh, sorry, I can't. I can't hear you. Oh, uh, hold on. How about now? There we go. Oh, okay, great. Yep. You're already all stripped down, and you joined three more people. <laughs> uh, oh, nice. <laughs> and it's a fun day, Friday, right? So we put our tie dye shorts on. I love that. Yeah, actually that warm up was really good. Like I'm actually already sweating. So good. How are you girls doing? Guys. Good, warm, perfect. Awesome. Um, so, are move those right into the jumps? Yeah. Well, I was just going to ask you: Are those movements that you would usually use when you actually warm up for your events and for track? Yeah. So this is just the pared down version. Yeah. It's obviously, not doing everything that uh, I would do in a warm up because there'd be some skips. Actually, you know what? We can. I know Jesse uh, did some of the ABCs. Yeah, we can revisit that because um, they're kind of the hallmarks of track and field, and we yep. can just do them in spots. So let's let's move on to some of those drills, and okay. then I don't know if we wanted to take a break at that point before we get into our jumps, or I'm you know what, we could probably do that into our jumps. Okay. Yeah. ABCs into jumps. Uh, so yeah, so we'll do some ABCs, and then we'll get into some some plyometric work, just really easy in spot plyometrics. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Okay, let's try it. Awesome. So, again, if any of you were on um, another day, I'm not too sure which day it was, but uh, actually a friend of mine, Jesse Lipscomb, he's a high jumper. Uh, we've known each other for ages. Um, and these are some of the drills that he probably showed you. And so we'll just kind of go back into that um, just to continue with the warm-up. So this is some of the stuff that I would do, obviously, on a track. I'd be going back and forth, but this is actually really working very well to warm me up. So first thing we're gonna do is called the A skip. So you know what, let's start with a march and then we'll get into a skip. So the A, we wanna make sure that we're bringing our knee up and our toe up, okay? So we're right there. So what we'll do is we're gonna do 10 marches. So here, here, two, three, four. Make sure we're keeping that toe up. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So when we're running, we want to make sure that our arms, for our arms, we're just driving that elbow back, and then it'll naturally come to the front. So we don't have to, in front, we want everything to kind of be in the back. Because when you bring that arm back, that's going to help bring that, that leg up, right? So we're here. Bring, helps bring the, the leg up. So we wanna make sure that we got good angles. Now we'll do the A skip. In place, normally, what I would do is travel forward with this, but we're gonna stay in spot. We're gonna go 10, so 10 each side with the skip. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. <laughs> so for the next one so what we do is we start with the march then we go to the skip and then we go to the run so i'm sure uh, many of you have probably had to do this they're called high knees same concept we want to make sure that we're keeping our toe up why do we do this is so that we have a mechanical advantage you can see when i hit the ground i'm already loaded that calf is loaded i can get off the ground if i do this First of all, we might stub our toe, but then also it takes time for the foot to get back down and then you to be able to come back off the ground. That's time that we don't want to spend. Don't worry about it. You probably all do this naturally, but if you ever think, man, I could be a little bit better, just think about keeping your toes pulled up towards your shins, okay? 
So we're gonna do 10 steps each side in a run. So all we're gonna do is take the skip out of it. We're just gonna fast like that. Okay, so let's go 10 each side. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, oh, seven, eight, nine, ten. Awesome. Now we're gonna move on to the B series. So essentially what the B is, we get the first part, which is the A. Then what we're gonna do is to extend out just a little bit. See how my uh, toes are pulled still back towards my shin? And then we're gonna bring the foot to underneath our hip, right? So here, get to there. So just, we don't want a full kick out like that. We just want ever so slight to get the foot moving down and back. So we'll start with the march, okay? Just like last time. So 10 each side. Up, around, one. Two. Just a little extension out front and then down and back. That's three. Out, down and back, four. Keeping that toe up. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Okay, so just like with the A's, we're gonna progress now to the skip, okay? In place, so it's just like you're bopping from one leg to the next. Just a little bop, and do the best that you can. Doesn't really matter as long as we're just moving, okay? So again, the things that we wanna focus on is getting that knee up, keeping that toe up, little bit of an extension out, and then bring it back, down and back towards the ground. And also, here's the thing that I used to tell the kids I used to coach. We wanna make sure that we keep our high heel shoes as on. So we want to make sure that we're not landing flat-footed onto our heel. So we land on the ball of the foot. So like a high heel shoe, right? So your heel is off the ground. Here we go. So we're going to do 10 skips each side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, <laughs> ten. Awesome. I hear some giggling and I love that. <laughs> so normally when you go into a run, you know what? Let's try the run. Doesn't matter what you look like. It's a matter of starting somewhere and then every time that you do this, you get better and better. So again, we're going to take the skip out of it and we're just going to run. So if you want, start with some high knees first. Then start to extend out in front of you. Make sure if you're around anybody that <laughs> you want to distance, you don't kick them. Yeah. You don't want to kick them in the butt. Okay, here we go. We're gonna start with a few high knees and then extend out in front just a little bit. Not like this, we're not karate kicking. We're just getting a little bit and then back it down, back down to the ground. Here we go, a couple high knees and then we'll get going. High knees and start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's not hard for me at all. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody saying that's not hard for them. That's awesome. <laughs> Last thing we're gonna do is called butt kicks or C. Yeah. So what it is is that we're bringing, we're working the hamstring now. So this is the last motion of our run where we close the foot so that we can get back into an A. Obviously, we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna close the foot again. It's very important that we're we're not stabbing our toe. Keep the toe up. And really what you want to think about is the ground is hot, so you want to get off the ground, okay? So we're going to go 10 each side, butt kicks, making sure that we're bringing that foot up. And I think my roommate is coming in, don't worry about it. Here we go, butt kicks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> so that will conclude, so really, um, when I'm doing a warm-up, this is a lot of stuff that I would do on the track. There's my room. <laughs> We're back. Awesome. Oh, push in here. We all did. We all got kicked each other. <laughs> but it happened. Super fun. Um, the the part that I honestly found hard was the the B like the extension of your foot. Like I get keeping your toe up, but then the extension and then trying to make it land. Yeah. Um, is there another way to just like walk through that really slowly? I just, or, or make it so I can implement it. Cause I just found it hard for me personally to right. make it like 
coming to fruition, when we started doing those kicks with that B component in it, I was like, I just looked like a clod hopper. It probably was yeah. coming way like down. Yeah, just like okay. that, yeah. Yeah, so another way that you could do this is, uh, I don't know if you ever do leg swings, but sometimes as a part of the leg swing, um, I guess grouping, what you could do is get your athletes to hold on to the fence and go through this motion slowly. Ah. So, for instance, this might not seem right as far as I'll just normally what you want to do is is have you have like the the fence. Yep. And then have the this the inside leg. Yeah. Be the one that's moving. But when I show you, I'm going to do the opposite, just so you can see. Okay. So normally I would be moving this leg because it's support, move, support. Yeah. But for our purposes, we'll go like this. Yep. So what you want to do is get them to stand, start in the high knee position. So their toe is up and then just get them to extend just a little bit out in front. So not this like extended kick out, extend a little bit out in front and then slowly move it down. Then there's going to be closure. We step over the knee as much as possible, get back into your hiding position, and then back down again. And just move slow through it, not having to move too fast. Slight extension, start moving down and back. Then they can feel the contact by back up. Oh, really? You can feel the contact, boom, there. That's where uh, you have the, the ball of the foot hitting. Yeah. And then back again, keep the toe up. As the foot reaches underneath the hip, yeah. that's where the contact, close. And then as they get used to it, they can start adding more, I guess, velocity, some more speed to it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. it's like a, it's like a wheel. Yeah. When I when you do it slow mo like that, I can actually like see the full mechanics of how you should properly run. Right. Do you, do you see that too, Adriana? Like when when Angela really slowed it down, you can actually see the whole levers going in place, right? Oh, we can't hear you. Your mic's off. Oh, oh my God. Uh, yeah, I could see it, and I was just trying it right now. It's just like as I added speed, though, it's like my legs started getting like a little wonky. It's like, okay, slow it down. All right, I'm starting to get in, then I slowly speed it up. But yeah, that was awesome. That was cool. Yeah, and I mean, you know, like, do you have to super focus on this stuff? No, it's just a nice drill to do to kind of as reminders. But when kids are out on the on the field, uh, they'll naturally just kind of go, unless somebody has some major kind of, um, I'd say deficiencies, not issues, but deficiencies, then that's when you can pull them aside and get them to do these a little bit more. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of players or a lot of athletes are like, how can I get faster? And they think just continuously sprinting, right? Where it's like, you have to get your technique down first. You have to get your form down first, right? And that was the perfect example of how you get that form down and then you can start improving on your speed. Because if you don't get that technique, yeah. you're, you're going to hit a, a wall eventually. Yeah, and especially with being able to get the knee up in front. Because some, some yeah. people have very low knee drive. And so just as a reminder, and if anything, you want to slow it down before you can speed it back up. Um, how much of running is technique? Because everyone thinks, again, like, you know, you think about technical sports. You think about running is just you can run or you can't run and you can train or you can't train. Like, how much yeah, of you know, like, is technique piece? Yeah, for some people it comes naturally. Yeah. Um, and other people probably need to just focus on it just a little bit more. I wouldn't say that it needs to be, because everybody's going to look a little bit different. Is there a prototype? Yes. But um, if you were to compare Usain Bolt to um, sprinters in the early, like, early late 90s, yeah, um, they're going to look different. So as long as you find a flow where somebody feels like they can get more out of their running stride. So if you're real chippy, you know what I mean, like really short strides and it looks like the person isn't going anywhere, then you can work on, on increasing probably the range of motion, really, when right. you think about it. So doing these drills can help also with the foot contact in the drills so we're not running full speed, but understanding what it feels like to stay on the ball of the foot, or as I say, your high heel shoes, so. Right. <laughs> is there a, sorry, one last question before you, yeah, you want to jump. What is the sort of science say right now on the length of a stride? Because there was a time when it was like, make your stride really long like a giant and you'd see my big canoes flying super long. 
And then there was a time where it was like, get him shorter. What is what? What's kind of the the thinking right now in terms of that stride length? For people just out there, they they know. Are you reaching further, or are you trying to keep them tighter and faster? Well, obviously, there's like this connection between stride length and frequency in order to kind of maximize speed. Now, I think a lot kind of just depends on the individual. So somebody who's super tall, obviously, is going to have a greater stride and length. Yeah. And they, because their legs have to travel a longer distance, they not might not have as much frequency where a shorter person, you don't want them overextending. And I think the biggest thing for coaches is you don't need these exact parameters. You can kind of see. You can kind of see whether or not an athlete is overextending. So, like, really reaching out in front and then also pitching in the back, which yeah. will change their body. So if they're really out of the back, we call it out of the back running versus in front. Yeah. So I think if you're just having a good balance of in front and kind of out of the back mechanics. So again, that we're not losing and almost falling downhill. Um, and a lot of times kids will be able to tell you that it just doesn't feel quite right. Yeah. Um, again, there's no specific, because everybody's so individual yeah. as far as height, leg, uh, limb length. I think you just need to get your your running eyes where you can see somebody it's like, you know, that might be a little bit too long of a stride or it's too short. So let's yeah. just try to, you know, maybe spend a little bit more time in the flight phase. Yeah. Uh, so flight phase is when both feet are off the ground yeah. uh, when running. Yeah. So instead of being so quick to get your feet to the ground, spend a little bit more time just enjoying, enjoying that and make it more like make it flow a little bit more rather than being so quick. Or if somebody's like way yeah. too much and say, we can shorten a little bit. A great thing to use also is the mini hurdles. So yes. like, yeah. yeah so well, yeah. So if you can use that and change the distance and you can do it so that people are working on frequency or lengthen them out uh, so that people are working a little bit on stride length or even a progression where it's short in the beginning and then lengthens out, which is more of a natural running where the strides aren't going to be as long totally. necessarily in the beginning. I could just use Tupperware containers for that for now if you didn't have uh, those. Yeah. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. Get yeah. creative with it. Slippers, right? slippers, whatever. Right. Um, do you want to show us the last piece that you were, were planning on doing and then we sort of sidebar you with all this conversation? But because you were going to do something on jumping, weren't you? Did yeah, you let's get a little bit jumping in because um, running is a plyometric and nothing works plyometrics like plyometrics. So we can just do some low level footwork type stuff. Yeah, I love okay. that. Okay. Awesome. okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, what we call line jumps. So usually you find either you can put down a piece of tape or if you're on a track, you could use a lane line. And what you want to do is jump uh, in front of and behind it. So if you don't have a piece of tape, it doesn't really matter. You just imagine it, right? So you just want to give a little hop over. And what we'll do is we're just going to go 10, 10 times forward and back, okay? So we'll start right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Done. Ten. So again, we just want to make sure that we're landing on the ball of the foot, and it's obviously two feet at a time. So what we'll do is we're going to do the same thing, and actually this turn what we're going to do is do lateral one. So I'm going to pretend there's a line down here, and I'm just going to jump, and then rebound and go back, and we'll go ten each side. So again, it's with two feet, and we want to try to make sure that we're staying on the ball so we're not landing on our heels, okay? So we're here, imagine a line, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that's the reason why I took my socks off, because I know if I would have tried this jump, I would have just slid completely out. So hopefully nobody had any issues like that. So now what we're going to do is just a simple ankle hop. So it's in place, instead of that last one, or the one that we did previously, we are going forward and back. Here, we're just going to stay in spot, and we're going to try to go up. And what we're going to do is we're going to move primarily through the ankle. So we don't want to bend so much at the knee. We want to keep a slight bend in the knee so we're not just boop, stuck right there like this with it. So slight bend to the knee, but not a whole bunch. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to go 15, 15 ankle jumps, and we're keeping the toe up, making contact, and then rebounding, getting back up. So this is what it looks like. Okay, so here we go, 15. 
One, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Oh, this is a good workout. Uh, next one we're gonna do. So similar, so remember in the last one I said we don't want so much knee bend because now we're gonna do a quarter squat jump. So not a full squat and then explode up. So what we're gonna do is be a little bit more rebound. So what we're gonna do is when we land, we get a little bit of a squat and then we try to go for height. So again, we're gonna go, we'll just do 10 of these because it's a little bit bigger of a movement than the ankle offs. So here we go. So what we're gonna do, it's gonna look like this. So we get down to about a quarter squat and then explode up and then continuously do it again. So as soon as we land, we get a little bit of compression and then get back up again. Here we go for 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, I know some people when they do this, they throw their arms back. So when they jump up, they throw their arms back. But as I see it, when I look at that, it's like an anchor. It's like you're trying to get back to the ground. Whereas what we want to do is use our arms to help us lift into the air. So some people will do it like this. But then you can't get as much height because you're anchoring yourself to the ground. Whereas with this, we use our arms to help us get into the air. Hopefully that makes sense. Whew. So usually in a progression for plyometrics, you want to move from double foot. A lot of times we'll do single effort. We were doing multiple effort. Multiple effort meaning multiple jumps in one go versus just like a, a squat jump, one time land, take a break. So we usually progress from double leg to single leg. So now we're gonna do single leg hops in place. So if you're not too, if you feel like you might need some assistance, you can always hold on to something with this if balance isn't the greatest. And then the next progression would be to use it without any assistance. So we're gonna start with the right leg. Same thing, we wanna make sure that we're not landing on our heel as much on the ball of the foot as possible. And just in spot, popping up and down. 10, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Switch. Same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Woo! <sighs> How's that? That that's great. Actually, um, the point that I super took away. I don't. Know, yeah, uh, you were doing the same thing. So whenever I do air squats, I do exactly this. Yeah. You can't see, but I'm pushing down with my arms. As soon as you said anchor, the movement's that much not that much different, but the idea of lifting. And it was unfortunate because the other day when we were doing one with Jesse, he was showing us like the arm drive. Right. And the, the, it kind of, the internet kind of broke up at that time, but he was sitting on the ground and he's a 260 pound dude. And just with his arm drive, he lift himself off the ground. Right. And then the way that you said that with jumping of anchor versus flight, right? Like it was just yeah, I think all this of this language, but. Yeah, because if you think about it, you're jumping, but then your counter movement is to drop down. Yeah. So then you're not really getting all the benefit of, of using your entire upper and lower body together. So it's almost like your lower body is working against the upper versus them working synergistically together to get you as much height. Yeah, that was smart. Oh, yeah, no. I jumped at least another foot doing that. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. No, that was a good tip. I like that. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to with just before we go like with these with these movements how often as someone who's a 110 meter sprinting specialist are you doing these versus like running well a lot of the stuff is is always a part of my warm-up so yeah. i know that's crazy when i when i was at um university a lot of the football guys would come out to track after their football season and they would get through our warm-up and be like okay see you later and we're like no that's that's just the warm-up for the rest of the workout yeah. So as I see it, a lot of these things that we're doing in our warm-up helps with um, you kind of like micro dosing certain things so that you don't have to do a full blown plyometric workout. You can yeah. just micro dose it into the warm-up. So yeah. a lot of the stuff virtually every not 
absolutely, depending on what the workout is, but to get ready for a sprint, I'll do the stuff in the warm up um, versus a day that I'm just going to do a tempo or something. I probably won't go through all of those things. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, I, I like that. Feels like a perfect warm up for yeah, any, awesome. literally any sport you wanted to do. Yeah. yeah, and actually, just going through that because I just was writing down like things that I would probably do in a warm up. And I was yeah. like, man, this is actually a really good, oh, yeah. good workout too, just sure. to get sure. indoors and yeah, if you yeah. Put a couple of layers on, get more of a sweat going. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, awesome. I, I thought that was a pretty great start for you know first week of being in quarantine and us all figuring out what we're doing. <laughs> um, so like, thank you so much. Yeah, no worries. Like yeah. getting that bit of insight from someone who does this for a living and has been doing it forever and been to the Olympics three times, pretty cool. And an Edmontonian from Ross Shep makes it even better. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's been my pleasure. I think yeah. what uh, you all are doing for, for the kids in the community is fantastic because I know these are kind of like crazy times to not be able to, to do the routine, but I think all the things that were you guys are showing is that just because you don't have your routine doesn't mean that you can't get some pretty cool things done and maybe even some things that you never would have thought about doing anyways that once we get back to normal which we will yep. you can take these things from inside now you're just practicing them and then you can take them out onto the side yeah absolutely 100 percent. awesome sure. have a great weekend um, thank, thank you so much, much. Uh, session yeah you guys have a great weekend too talk to you again soon hopefully